All right, folks, welcome to the webinar. Uh, I know some people are going to be joining in, but we can get started. As I said, uh, this is the intraday chart of the ES Futures, uh, which is the S&P 500 mini e-minis. And we are looking at a fairly down market, 15 points down. And I think it's coming off the back of some statements that President, made, uh, President Trump made about the US-China talks just about an hour or so ago and uh, that has sent the markets going down. Uh, but regardless, let's see, this is an up and down uh, kind of thing that's uh, been going on for a long time now. Uh, and so, uh, you know, remains to be seen. But uh, let me go to a presentation first while we are waiting. Uh, this, is, uh, this is the Option Tiger webinar series. Uh, we hold about one webinar a week and it'll be on various topics, including day trading, swing trading, algorithmic tools because that's become important now even at the retail trader level uh, so we'll be talking about that uh, quite a bit uh, there'll be some uh, webinars on technical analysis there'll be some webinars on option strategies so the best way to keep uh, to stay informed or keep updated is if you can go to this bitly link and this bitly link will take you to uh, a, uh, a, a page on the Option Tiger website and you can enroll in this course for free. I think I showed you another one also. Either one is fine. Uh, you can go to one of these pages and uh, you can uh, register there. That way you'll be updated with uh, all the latest uh, webinars or even the recordings and all of that. Okay, so um, let me come back here. Uh, while we are waiting for some people to come, I'll just give you a brief background about Option Tiger and myself. Uh, my name is Hari Swaminathan. I'm the founder of OptionTiger.com. I started Option Tiger in about 2012, but I've been uh, an options trader uh, for much more than that. Uh, started about 12 years ago, and uh, since I founded Option Tiger, that's when I've become a, a mentor. And uh, I have a Udemy channel. I think many people may have come from there also. Uh, my Udemy channel has 100,000 enrollments and 60,000 unique students. Uh, you can go to udemy.com and you'll see, you can go to, uh, you know, udemy.com or just search, you know, search on my name there and you'll see this is uh, 61,000 students here. So that's a little bit of my background and of course I run optiontiger.com which is uh, my own website and uh, there's, uh, if you go to the homepage you'll see various, uh, you know, products there. In addition to, we're going to be talking about these algos today, but in, in addition to the algos, if you're a complete beginner in financial markets or beginner to options, uh, you can start right here. There's each of these modules has about uh, 15 to 20 courses. So it's all very comprehensive and you'll see all the courses as well over here. And uh, then with the, this is of course uh, in the beginners module. And then once you get into uh, the intermediate, it's again the same thing. There's about 15 to 20 courses and the same thing with advanced strategies as well. Now, over the years, I have uh, through trial and error, but I have developed my own tactics and techniques. So you can call these sort of like gorilla tactics uh, to deal with the options market. Uh, because in the options market, we are dealing with uh, market makers on the other side. And so it's very important to get an edge. And so all of these uh, systems, uh, they all tackle some kind of an options trading strategy. Uh, so in this case, income max is spreads and straddles. This is a day trading system, a swing trading system. This is for ETFs. This is to manage earnings uh, reports, which comes uh, every uh, three months. And here you go with calendars. Uh, iron condors, weekly options, and this is a generic adjustment product. So all of these are very deep intellectual property. It's all my prop uh, proprietary intellectual property, and they're very sophisticated techniques. So all of these are here. You can find it on the Option Tiger website. Now, uh, today, what we are going to be discussing or seeing, I'll be demonstrating this, is uh, the SPX index day trading. And uh, this was uh, just launched uh, this month and uh, so uh, obviously and this is very powerful and this is very powerful and so we'll see we're going to be mining the deep internals of the SPX index itself. So let me uh, go there and let me uh, you know uh, talk about that. So in general algorithmic tools have become popular are becoming popular and at the retail level it's still uh, a little nascent but uh, definitely becoming uh, popular. 
Uh, with options, it's more trickier unless you're a big hedge fund with a large IT team and a large uh, hardware budget. It's hard to number crunch all the different parameters that go into options. And so with options, it's even more trickier. And so, uh, you know, what we do at the, what I do at the retail level is to try to give uh, the best tools and indicators that can work for individual traders. Uh, and so previously we had to cycle through each stock and each chart and indicators, but now algos can be coded to do the same kind of um, logic behind uh, these, uh, you know, these uh, algos. And uh, but then we can put it on watch list. We can do a lot of things. And so, you know, what I have currently, I have a day trading algo which filters the best stocks, and that's that's the screen I had earlier over here. So this is uh, I'll just show you a brief over here so for today this is a day trading uh, day trading signal right there you can see and it also looks at pre-market uh, and so you can see these are all the very bearish candidates so today if you wanted to take a trade uh, to the bearish side now these would be your candidates and then you can uh, go into each one of them if you if you know if, if the list is too large then you'll have to pick something and i have a put call ratio also over here so any 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 stock that has a higher put call ratio uh, is obviously a good candidate for uh, you know for a bearish trade so today in this particular algo we are seeing all these six or seven stocks that are uh, behaving much more bearish than the other as you can see ever you know almost all the major stocks are down because we are down about 15, 16 points on the futures. But uh, we'll, uh, we'll come back to this. Uh, I just wanted to show the day trading algo for the stocks. Um, and then today we are going to be talking about the uh, day trading, the SPX itself, the index. And uh, so this index uh, also uh, has a lot of advantages. And so we are going to combine two different indicators. We are going to get a deep look inside the market internals and this is going to give us some very good insights as to what kind of trading uh, we can do. Uh, I also have a swing trading algo. The only difference is it's a multi-week trading time frame. Uh, the day trading algo looks at every five minutes, whereas the swing trading looks uh, at, um, I would say, a few weeks. Uh, and then, you know, when you take a trade also, you want to take a trade uh, that and, and there's a service around that, too. And, uh, you know, I, I can show that later. So let's talk about the SPX market internals. So as you know, the SPX uh, is a index composed of uh, the 500 biggest companies in the US. So when we look at a futures chart before the markets open, the futures are simply trading based upon sentiment that has happened before the markets open. So whether it's coming from Asia, whether it's coming from Europe or whether it's coming from the US itself, uh, the futures up until 9.30 a.m. Eastern time is simply a reflection of the sentiment that has developed for that day. However, once it becomes 9.30 a.m. and all the stocks start trading, then we have a different set of dynamics. So the SPX index itself uh, then actually uh, is calculated by how each one of its component stocks are behaving for that day. So with 500 stocks, there's a lot of data there. And so we already have some standard indicators that are available to us on most charting platforms. Uh, one of that is the Vol SPD. It's fairly helpful. Uh, you know, it gives you the up volume minus the down volume. Uh, it's not a complete picture, but it's a, it, 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 it's a decent uh, market internal. Similarly, you have the advances minus declines also. And then you have the ticks. Now, the ticks are very interesting because once you once the markets open and all 500 stocks start trading, then each of these stocks are either ticking up or they're ticking down. And they're ticking up and ticking down several uh, times in one second itself because, uh, you know, some of these stocks trade in very, very high volumes. Apple, Google, all of these are good examples. And so there is several upticks and downticks. And so if you then if you look at the combined 500 stocks, uh, the ticks gives you the upticks minus the downticks at any given time. So the ticks, you can say, is the lowest denominator because it is catching the lowest denominator of market data which is at the tick level itself at each individual tick level 
But the tick itself is not very helpful because if you look at the ticks, let's go take a look at the ticks itself. So it's called dollar tick for the uh, NYSE. And so if you look at the tick, uh, this is a five day, five minute. And so the previous day is right here. I mean, this chart, you know, there's, there's no way you can make head or tail out of this. So for every five minutes, I mean, this five minutes that, you know, the, uh, the ticks went up a lot and then it, it comes down a lot. Then it comes down some more, then it goes up. But this chart itself doesn't provide too much meaning or too much insight. What we need is something else. And that's what the SPX tick algo provides. So if you can think about it, when each stock is ticking up or ticking down, and then what we do is we take a cumulative value. So let me go back a day and show you the previous, uh, you know, yesterday's uh, trading day. Uh, and you can see uh, that, you know, once the market start opening over here, uh, it, it, you know, the first five minutes ticks down. And then, the, you know, the next five minutes, this tick is added cumulatively to this value. And so now you have a chart that is going cumulatively every five minutes. So what does that do? That, that tells us that as the trading day is progressing, whether we have a bearish sentiment because you know, we are calculating the cumulative tick. So in one sense, we are calculating, uh, uh, you know, we are assessing the breadth of the market. So which is how many, uh, you know, is the market weak? Is it strong? And if it's weak, is it weakening further? You know, that's the kind of, you know, information that's very helpful. So as you can see yesterday, uh, you know, once the markets open, uh, you know, the ticks were going down and I'll talk about the customer RSI later. But here you have a trade right there because the, it's telling you the market, you know, internals are weakening. And, uh, you know, the moment it, 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 it starts going up, you get out of the trade. And so even if you got in somewhere here or here, this is a nice five, six point move on the S&P. And if you're dealing with S&P options, uh, a five, six point move just on a five contract position with about 35 Delta can generate uh, about um, $1,200 to $1,500 uh, in profits within, within minutes, you know, 15, 20 minutes. Uh, and so you want to wait for these very persistent kind of moves and that's when you take the trade. So I'll get into all of that. I just wanted to show the concept of the ticks and then the concept of the cumulative ticks because it's the cumulative ticks that really give you the insight and not the ticks themselves. So now the markets have not opened. So you see that the ticks are not, uh, you, know, you know, they're not there yet. So with that little background on the ticks, let me go to the next one, which is really cool. Uh, you know, the, this is the custom RSI. So you've probably seen the regular RSI before. It's just a, you know, uh, the relative strength index indicator. And it generally, uh, you know, shows you when a stock is overbought and when a stock is oversold. You can see the values are, the overbought values are generally considered 70 and uh, the oversold is 30. Uh, and it's also considered to be a, a reversal indicator. So once the stock gets into overbought, for example, uh, you know, you can, uh, you know, it, it, it'll sort of reverse at some point, may not be immediately, but, uh, you know, at some point it will reverse. So it's generally considered to be a reversal indicator. Now, the custom RSI is the normal RSI, which has been customized uh, highly. And this customization, what it does is it, it changes the meaning of the regular RSI. So in this case, the custom RSI tells us when something is bullish, you stay in the trade. And when something is bearish, you stay in the trade. So it creates these zones for you. And so let's go back to the same example from yesterday. And if you see this trade right here, uh, you know, the, the, the custom RSI goes into the bearish, uh, you know, bearish zone right away because, you know, all this pre-market action has been bearish. However, we don't take the trade based on the custom RSI. The custom RSI is just a, a, a confirmation indicator. And what you want to do is you want to look at the ticks. And when the ticks have lined up and then the custom RSI gives you the confirmation that you can stay in this bearish zone until uh, you know, shown otherwise, that's when you get out of the trade. So here, as you can see, this one was a little bit of an up, uh, you know, uptick here. And, and once you see two dots like this, uh, you want to get out of the trade. So uh, you know, if you had gotten somewhere here, you would get out somewhere here. So which is still about a four or five point move uh, on the S&P. And so 
the custom RSI is a great confirmation indicator. And so as you can see, then through the day, the custom RSI goes into the bullish. However, you, if you look at the ticks, the, you know, uh, uh, the ticks are not bullish. They are below the zero line, first of all. So it starts off below the zero line. And so you don't want to take a bullish trade because the ticks and the custom RSI are not aligned. So the, so the next opportunity you get is somewhere here and you can see that the ticks are already developing negative. So even at this bar, you have three red dots and that's uh, good. However, the custom RSI is still in the bullish. And so you want to wait for this and, and get in somewhere here. This would have been a small trade, maybe three points on the S&P, which would be about a $500, $600 profit. And then uh, it, it came out of that zone. Uh, let's see if there was uh, uh, there was another one. There's a brief one right here, as you can see. All the uh, you know the customer here. here there's one. There, you know there's a nice one over here, and then there is one more over here. So on a day like yesterday, which, you know, which was a negative day, you want to look for bearish trades because the S and P is bearish. The ticks are below the zero line. And so you want to wait for bearish trades and the way you wait is you want to see at least two dots on the five minute chart and you also want to see some confirmation from the custom RSI and so that's when you would take the trade. So here if you take the trade somewhere here and you would get out uh, you know as soon as the custom RSI turns around or the uh, ticks turns around time to get out of the trade. So you know that's how you would interpret this. Uh, we do have a couple of minutes before the markets open. So let me just uh, go to my presentation again and lay out some basic rules as to how uh, you would uh, you would trade this system. So these are some bitly links and I'll be uh, sending this PDF as well. So you know, and you'll be watching this video so you can look at that later. Uh, meanwhile, if you have any questions, always email us at info at option tiger.com. So here are some rules for usage of the SPX ticks algorithm. So you want to let the ticks develop for about 30 minutes to one hour unless there is strong momentum at the open. If there is strong momentum at the open, then fine. Uh, like yesterday, there was very strong momentum at the open. But you want to let the ticks develop because the tick data has to come in. And so it is rare. Now today also we might see some powerful move at the open. As you can see, the, uh, you know, the S&P is, uh, is very weak in the pre-market. So we might be able to see that. Then. Well, you know, once the ticks data has developed and a storyline is building for the day, that's when you gauge the market sentiment, meaning whether you're going to go for calls or whether you're going to go for puts and you want to align it uh, on the five minute chart. So if the ES or the SPX is bullish, the ticks are above the zero line and increasing and the custom RSI is in bullish, you take the call option. If the ES is bearish and the ticks are below zero and decreasing, the, and the custom RSI is in the bearish zone, you take the puts. You look for persistence of about two dots with, with the above conditions. If the ticks and the custom RSI are not in sync, then there is no trade. You take the profits if one of the two indicators start to go the other way. And if you want to get a finer view of the chart, you can step down to the one minute. It's very, very insightful when you step down to the one minute and I'll, I'll be doing that once the market starts. So that's as far as the, uh, 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 the ticks rules itself. Now the trading plan is, is this, now you choose the nearest expiry because we don't plan to hold it overnight, a 35 to 45 delta, whether it's call or puts on the SPX options. The trading plan assumes an account size of 30K so that we avoid the pattern day trader rules. And if you take a five contract position, uh, and of course you can start lower. And if you assume a five to seven point move with a stop loss at 25%, in the long run, this will work very well. Eight out of 10 trades are going to work in your favor because the, the indicators are very powerful and what they tell us uh, about the internal state of the market is very powerful. And so you don't need any adjustments. We don't carry the trade overnight. And so you're in, you're in maybe for 15 minutes, half an hour, whatever it is, and you take the profits and you run. In general, I find that there is a trading opportunity once in the morning and once in the afternoon session as well. In the middle, there is somewhere between 11, 30, 12, uh, uh, you know, in the you know, Eastern time, uh, up until about 1, 30 to 2, even the big traders go for lunch. And so you will see a lull in the activity and that you can see, uh, you know, with the volume. So in, uh, during that time, there's no need to, uh, you know, there's no need to look at the markets uh, because you don't want to be looking at the markets all day. So, but there is an opportunity generally that comes once in the morning and once in the evening as well. The markets have just started, so let's go take a look. This is where I want to jump down to the one minute chart. 
because we want to get a slightly quicker feedback loop as to what's happening with the ticks. So as you can see, the market started negative, uh, which is no surprise. You know, it started around negative 145 and then it ticked down again to negative 265. However, as you can see, the price action, uh, the S&P wants to uh, recover a little bit. So let's just watch this here for some time. And of course, we need to let the ticks develop uh, a little bit. So if there was strong momentum at the open that, that can take it down, then we, we can potentially jump on that trade because we know the futures are 16 uh, points down. So here you see, uh, you know, there it is. It, it's, it's being taken down and we're getting a quicker feedback loop because we are on the one minute chart. So let's just watch this and see what's going on. And, uh, uh, you know, uh, let's see how these one minute ticks develop. So as of now, you want to watch this number and this number is here. It, it'll, it'll tell you, uh, you know, right here on the left hand side what the tick value is. So as you can see, that bar just got over and we want to calculate the tick value. Now it's going down even further, negative 333. So that is, uh, you know, a, a negative 100 below even the previous one and it's still going down. So in, in general, I wouldn't advise to go, uh, you know, in at the open, but this could be one situation where because of the strong momentum from the pre-markets, uh, you might want to take a small trade. And so if you take a small trade, you would, you would go somewhere, uh, you would go to the options and, uh, you know, uh, get into the SPX here. Let me take this off here. And uh, once the options come up, uh, you know, we'll see. But uh, as you can see, this, you know, uh, the ticks are definitely developing uh, to, the, to, uh, to the bearish side, but it's still very, very early to take a trade. So uh, unless there is strong momentum like we do right now, uh, I would say, you, you know, you do want to wait. So on, on most days, uh, you might not get that kind of a strong momentum going into, you know, going into the open. And yeah, I mean, if you wanted to take a small trade, I would, you know, put a two contract trade over here. It's looking negative. The ticks are going down. And now you can see the customer RSI is well in the bearish zone as well. So, but still a little early in the, in the market day, I would say. Uh, I think at least you have to give it about 30 minutes to 45 minutes because the tick data needs to get established and a pattern needs to get established and a storyline needs to build. And so that has not happened yet. And so you might see a lot of choppiness at the open and which is why you want to get a better feel for the ticks uh, and, 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 go in, uh, you know, and go in when uh, you know, that, that story is being uh, built nicely. So once again, you can see that now the ticks are negative 415. But now once the markets develop for about a, a half an hour or so, you want to move to the five minute chart, okay? You, you want to move to the five minute chart. So in any case, we let this develop a little bit. Uh, let me go back and uh, also, uh, just, uh, you know, if there's, uh, I think there's a couple of things to, uh, you know, also mention. So here, you know, as you know, uh, with the SPX, uh, the, the SPX options, uh, you know, you can trade the SPX options directly for sure. Uh, then you can also trade the spider ETF or the spider options. Now, if you're a stock trader, if you, if you don't trade options, then you can trade the spider itself. You know, the, the spider is an ETF and you can trade the spider itself. Uh, you can trade the slash ES options on futures. So I'm, uh, I think you might have heard about it. Uh, ES, the slash ES has options on it as well. Then you have the SSO, which is a 2x leverage of the spider ETF. Then you have SDS, which is the inverse 2x of the spider ETF. Then you can trade the ES futures itself on the active trader screen. So you have the flexibility, whether you're an options trader, whether you're a futures trader, whether you're a stock trader, you can use this algorithm and trade any of these instruments. Now, because this is a market internals um, algo, you cannot use this for stocks. You cannot use this for stocks. And that's why if you want to use it for stocks, you, you, you know, you want to get this algorithm, okay, over here. So here, as you can see, they, you know, we have some very bearish candidates. Uh, once again, you want to align uh, your trade with the uh, prevalent market condition, so which is bearish. Now, you'll see a couple of very bullish here, but you don't want to touch them today. And you might wonder why, why is Apple bullish? It's 24 cents, uh, uh, you know, a negative. That's because where it's coming from, it might have been coming from a dollar or two negative. And so on a five minute basis, this is, uh, this is bullish. However, you don't want to go for the bullish candidates. You want to go for the bearish candidates. So let me take this out again. 
uh, and put it away. Uh, let's go take a look at what the markets are doing. Uh, some kind of a recovery here. This is what I mean. You might find some choppiness here uh, at the open. So you want to let this open dynamic uh, set in and let there be, you know, be a storyline before you, uh, you know, before you take a trade. Now you might see this, the custom RSI is moving into bullish. The custom RSI is only a price based indicator. It does not do anything with the internals. And so based on this price action here, the custom RSI has entered bullish, but that doesn't mean we can get into a bullish trade because our primary indicator is the ticks. And it's only when the ticks and the custom RSI are aligned, that's when you take the trade. So here, there is no trade, even onto the bullish side, there is no trade because it's a weak market. And so you want to wait for the put trade uh, and go down. And if you're a stock trader, you want to take a short position rather than a long position. Uh, and if you're a futures trader, you want to sell the futures uh, rather, than the, uh, rather than buy it. However, this is not the time. As you can see, there is a little bit of a stability or recovery coming into the market. And so this is exactly why you want to give the tick some time and let it develop. So we'll let this develop some more and we'll come back to it. Let me go back to uh, the presentation. I think there's a couple of things more that uh, uh, you should know uh, uh, when you're trading these uh, uh, when you're trading these instruments here. Uh, I, I do have a I do have a July special. I'll come back to that. I think uh, you know. And then of course we have some uh, testimonials that are already coming in. Uh, and of course you'll get this. You'll be seeing this video. But here here you go. Todd just made. Uh, and I would highly recommend you paper trade it. Uh, the uh, you know paper trade it uh, you know at least for some time and you know just get used to pulling the trigger properly uh, uh, you know as as to when you need to go in for the trade and when uh, you know when you don't need to go in for the trade so here you can see this uh, you know Todd uh, just on that day uh, he made 3100 and here's a trader using the spy uh, you know small trade this is actually a very impressive trade uh, you know it made 300 on 400 in equity so that's 75 percent ROI. Uh, and there you go. So and then there's one more trader here, uh, 1200 plus profit on her trade. So these are all the things there is, uh, you know, uh, uh, there's flexibility in the trading instruments. Um, you just stick to the trade plan. And if you uh, follow these rules, uh, this can be a, a very good, uh, you know, very good intraday uh, SPX, uh, you know, trading, uh, you know, algo and a trading system, frankly. And the advantage with the SPX is that you have all this market data internal information which you don't get when you talk about stocks. When you talk about stocks, you don't have these. So here we go, as you can see now, a little bit of a turn coming in. So this kind of choppiness will exist when the markets open. And so you want to be careful of it, which is why it's important for the ticks to come in. And uh, we are still on a one minute chart. We are only about 10 minutes into the market open. Uh, I would say it needs more information uh, before uh, the ticks start presenting, uh, you know, presenting us with meaningful information. OK, yeah. Uh, by the way, if anybody has questions, please do type it into the question box. I will come to the question box every now and then when I get a chance. So uh, any questions, please type it in there. Uh, how much is five contracts, Gerardo? Five contracts is, you know, generally it will be between anywhere between a 2000 to a 4000, 2000 to a 5000 dollar trade. Okay. And you can check it out. If you go to the 35 delta uh, or 40 delta, you can see the prices. Also, it depends which expiry you choose. Uh, and you don't need to choose very far. I mean, you can choose today's expiry if you're trading it in the morning. But if you're trading it in the afternoon, I would say go to go to the next expiry. Now we know the SPX has three expiries a week. And so there is plenty, plenty of opportunities without paying too much for your options. And Calvin says you can also trade the XSP. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Now, now you can do that. There is also the, you know, the triple leveraged SPX, you know, L and all of that. I just put the main instruments there that have a lot of liquidity. Uh, and so you want to you want to also look at liquidity before uh, you know you take the trade. But the SPX, the SPY, these are all highly highly liquid uh, you know uh, instruments. So there's absolutely uh, no worries in uh, you know in in, uh, in taking those trades. So here we go. Still some choppiness over here. I I don't think we still have a trade, a good trade. If at all there was anything, it was right here at the open. But that is just too soon to take a trade. Uh, you know, and uh, I would just let that go because at the open, you're going to see some choppiness. So it looks like some kind of a recovery, but, but bear in mind, the ticks are still showing negative 400. So 
uh, it is a down day and so you want to wait for the right opportunities uh, to take a put option rather than anything else. All right. While we wait for this, let me uh, you know finish up with this uh, with this presentation. So then we can just focus on uh, the uh, on on the markets here. So you can you know a trading plan for uh, for thousand dollars a day, just this much. You know, take a take a five contract position, maybe a three contract position to start with. Uh, just learn the you know uh, the triggering process and. If you take a wrong trade and if it goes down, just take a stop loss and come out. There's no point in fighting with the trade. There's no point in doing adjustments unless you're very proficient with options. Uh, you know, you, uh, you can certainly do that. But in general, if you take if you take the loss uh, and this system will produce about eight to eight to ten winners. The trick is to master the art of pulling the trigger properly. And which is why I say at least for a few days, you, you, you run it through paper money and all you need to look for is one to two trades a day and if you keep that trading to that level it will be successful if you over trade it becomes a problem so anyway let's just watch the markets here let's see what it's doing so as you can see it is still choppy uh, it's going up and down there's no pers there's no sort of uh, real persistence here at the open and so you want to let this uh, let this develop some more so let me explain uh, the I think we are had a, I mean, yeah, I do have a special this month. Uh, you know, this is the July special and it ends tomorrow. Uh, and uh, if you've not seen it before, this is a very, very good uh, special. The SPX ticks algorithm code. This goes for 997 and then the custom RSI goes for 497, but you can get that for free. So I'll just point out that to you. So if you come here to the home page, uh, here you have the market internals based SPX. And what you can do is, uh, you can uh, and then there's a playlist here. Okay, you can watch this YouTube playlist. There's a whole bunch of videos There's some sample trades all of that over there And then if you buy the algo, then you don't need to buy the custom RSI you, You'll get the custom RSI for free. Okay, so that's the that's the July special that ends tomorrow so uh, just wanted to uh, uh, Make that clear and I think that's all I had for the presentation part let me just check it all. Of course, you'll get this presentation also. Uh, and so you, you'll, you'll, you'll be able to look through all of these rules and uh, also look at uh, the markets and see, uh, uh, you know, and see how it is. And if you go to the YouTube playlist, uh, there's a lot of analysis videos, uh, you, know, all, you know, in that playlist itself where uh, we look at various days and how these indicators work. And uh, so there's a lot of information there. So let me go back to the markets. Let's just watch this. So while we are watching, if you have questions, you can please uh, you know type it into the question box. We can uh, we can talk about it. Um, right now, waiting to see if we get a chance for a put trade because we are still 12 points down. So uh, at this point, even though this looks like a nice move, uh, you know it could have gone. It you know it could have tumbled anywhere. So uh, it's really not the way to trade. Uh, you can of course take a scalping attitude and say, okay, I'm going to be out in two minutes or three minutes. But that's not what this is all about here. You want to pick one to two good trades a day and make that, you know, on a five contract position, you can make a, a thousand, 1500. Obviously, every person's account is different. And so if you have a $300,000 account, you can increase your contract size. But I would uh, highly recommend that you keep your contract sizes uh, small until you've, uh, you've you know, you can you can take the right trades because you do want to pull the trigger properly. Uh, and with these tools, you can. Uh, it, but the key is that you don't over trade. So in any case, let's watch this. There's still a lot of choppiness here. I'm just watching this. So as you can see, the ticks are improving now. It's still negative, but the ticks are improving. It, the ticks are improving and, and, and you can also get another feel if you have this day trading algorithm also you can now see uh, there is more bullish than bearish if you saw earlier there was only one or two bullish uh, and everything else was bearish but now we have more bullish and once again bullish is you know it's, it's going to be relative here this is clearly uh, a bullish you know a booking is coming from 4.8 uh, Twilio is uh, 1.6 but just because Microsoft is down 72 cents, it doesn't mean it's not bullish because in the pre-market, it could have been down a couple of dollars. And so, uh, you know, what, what we are looking at here, let's just go take a quick look at uh, Microsoft because that's a good example of why that stock is, you know, showing bullish. 
and as you can see you know it's been coming down all this while and boom you know so so this is bullish for microsoft this is bullish definitely so you can see the algorithm working uh, you know in 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 that manner so I, i'm going to go back to the es here while we are watching and waiting this let's go back uh, 10 days or rather 5 days sorry this is a 5 day uh, this is a 1 day 1 minute let me move this to a 5 day 5 minute chart and let's go back some and see what happened in the previous days uh, and uh, you know and, and and go from there so here this is you know if you look at 5 days uh, here we go and here as you can see this is uh, let me go back to the beginning of the day. So as you can see, when the day starts, even though the price is going down, uh, the ticks are generally uh, above the zero line. And so that's telling you, even though this is RSI is telling you it's in the bearish zone, just based on price action, uh, the ticks is telling you, no, that's not the case. And so you don't really have a trade at all, all the way until here. You know, here now the ticks are, you know, it's, 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 it's nice and positive. You, you have the green dots developing here, but it's only at this, at this bar that it goes into the very bullish. And then you don't want to be shaken out by one or two dots. You want to, you know, you, you want to stay in this trade because the RSI is telling you it is bullish. It is in the bullish zone. So you want to stay in this trade and suddenly, boom, you get this nice little pump up. And this would have been a $2,000 profit on five contracts because just because this move is just intense and uh, it, it would have been a 2000 and and you wouldn't you may have taken off the trade over here but uh, you know because there are three dots and i would say three dots is is something that uh, uh, you know you would want to get out but if you look at the price action there's no real uh, degradation of price and the customer rsi uh, you know still in the very bullish uh, but if not you can get back in uh, somewhere here and then of course it's a little choppy on the ticks but you know it, it, it might have been a decent trade all the way to the end okay so that's uh, that was one let's go to the next day once again you see most of the time it starts off sort of in the midline and then depending on what kind of day it is you want to take a trade so here i think also was a bullish day but you want to take the trade uh, you know somewhere here if you would have if you would have taken this trade you might have been chopped up you might have had to go through a stop loss however once you came in here i think this was the this was the trade right uh, you know close to the end you would have had a nice little trade over here once on this bar it went above the zero and the rsi is uh, uh, is in the very bullish zone uh, you would have been able to go into the close so if you did get stopped out on the earlier trade then this trade would have made up nicely for it so that's as far as that day is concerned let's go to the next day uh, this this day clearly looks like a bearish day so you would want to wait and you can see the ticks developing here and once this this thing also goes into the bearish zone this is a lovely trade actually this is a lovely trade and even though there's a little bit of choppiness and there's only one green dot so uh, you know you you're staying in this trade and, and this is again a two thousand dollar trade right there this is a two thousand dollar trade uh, and you want to stay in there until uh, you get uh, you know you get the signal to get out now here the uh, the custom rsi wants to uh, go out of the bearish zone and it's already changed direction over here so once it changes direction take the profits take the profits you've been in a nice trade so you take the profits let's go back to our current day see what's happening a uh, little bit of a recovery now you can see on the 5 minute chart the ticks are moving positive okay but it's still a negative day so you you know uh, it's it's pretty unclear how you would want to trade this uh, because the futures are still negative 11 over here and it's still not yet we are still in the first half an hour 25 minutes and so i would want to go back to the 1 minute because we get a better feedback loop from the 1 minute chart so if we do that then we go all the way here and you can see on the one minute chart also the ticks are improving however we know it's a negative day so at this point you're not looking for a call trade you're looking for a put trade if there is that would be the easy trade uh, this would be going against the grain so if with this kind of a price action here you can see nice persistent green dots but it's all below zero and the futures are down 11 if you were tempted to take a small trade you would want to keep it on a tight leash uh, just take like two or three contracts and uh, as soon as the profits develop just take the profit because this uh, you know it would be a trade that goes against the grain and so you wouldn't want to persist with that trade if, if at all but and my uh, my opinion is that you you know you want to go with the uh, with the trend in the market and so 
and and so you want to uh, you know you want to uh, what do you call wait for the right uh, signal that's better otherwise you might end up getting stopped out and you don't want to overtrade that's for sure you don't want to overtrade all right question here if you were to ever update the algo would the updates be for free yeah once you get the algo uh, you know uh, it's it, you know it's a one time uh, purchase and if there was any updates to the algo see see once you get the algo you're going to go into a into a course for this uh, for this algo and that course material has all the latest updates in fact i give uh, uh, you know every day sort of commentary every other day as to how uh, you know uh, how the ticks uh, are working for that day uh, there are videos there and of course if the algo were to be updated uh, you would definitely get the uh, you know you would definitely get the update so the ticks are slowly trying to come into the positive let's go take a look at our day trading algo and see what that what that is doing uh, once again slightly more tilted towards the towards the bullish than bearish uh, that's because of this kind of price action you can see why that's the case because the price action has been uh, you know from the open just these couple of bars down but it's basically trying to recover all the lost ground however we are still negative 10 points uh, and so that is uh, uh, you know that is uh, uh, you know, uh, that is an issue so this uh, you know any trade to the call side would be going against that uh, premise question do you provide instruction on how to uh, set up this chart yeah 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 so once you get this algo you'll get complete uh, the installation instructions you'll get the code uh, and uh, uh, you know once you follow those instructions it will be uh, installed into your platform now this works only on think or swim so if you were trading on another platform then I would say you open a, a, a Think or Swim account with TD Ameritrade with a, just the minimum balance, uh, you know, then that's $100. And once you do that, you get access to real-time data and you can install uh, the indicators there and still do your trading in your own platform that you've been doing. But uh, yeah, if it's, but if, you do, yeah, if you're doing TOS, you'll get the complete inst uh, in, uh, install inst uh, instructions uh, as well as the code. So the ticks have just gone into the positive as you can see but price wise we are still down 11 so this can change this can change there you go see it's come back now just slightly negative not a whole lot but once again here there is no trade because the custom RSI is not so the custom RSI is purely a price action and so you want that price action indicator also to be aligned with uh, you know with the uh, with the ticks. Uh, and that's why uh, you know there's no trade at this point, even you know whether to the call side or to the put side. Okay, so the custom RSI is going in; it's gone into the neutral. The ticks are developing negative. There's already three dots there on this one-minute chart, so it's only a one-minute chart. We haven't moved to a five-minute yet, so it remains to be seen how this plays out. This was some high volume on these two bars here, as you can see. It was, uh, it, it's higher than at least the last 10 or 15 bars. And so this could be forming a support zone here, in which case uh, the markets may want to recover all of this lost ground. You can see now it's down about nine points. And so if that's the case, then if, if this kind of a price action remains persistent, then yes, definitely you can take, uh, you know, go into a call trade, but it's still too early uh, to say that uh, a call trade makes sense because we are, uh, down nine and a half points still at this point it certainly looks like it wants to recover there's no question down about 8.25 8.5 so looks like the storyline could be that it wants to recover this uh, lost ground in the you know from the pre-market uh, the pre-market of course went down hard based on president trump's comments uh, on the u.s china talks and so the markets may want to brush that off now the other thing is as we know, tomorrow is the uh, Fed announcement uh, on the interest rate cut. So in anticipation of that, the markets have been sort of, you know, slowly chugging to the higher side. Uh, uh, and so if not for those comments, I think the market was somewhat neutral. Uh, and then, you know, it might have gone up again today, uh, you know, at least up until the Fed, uh, you know, uh, 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 the Fed announcement. Uh, a 25 basis point cut is actually baked into the stock market. So it could be one of those instances where you buy the rumor and you sell the news and, and that could happen tomorrow. So I'm going to go back to the five minute chart. Let's see how that looks. And as you can see, the 
ticks are coming down over here even though this was a nice up bar you can see that was a negative tick there so the RSI won't tell you that because the RSI just looks at price so as we get closer to the one hour mark that's when a trading opportunity can develop nicely because there's information about the ticks and the market is also settling in from all you know whether see when the market's open there is a either a pent-up demand or a pent-up supply and so that rushes out of the gate and uh, that is one reason why uh, you don't want to take the trade at the open uh, because that's more of a momentum play rather than a tick play that's more of a momentum play if there is strong momentum sure you can you, you know you can but uh, in general you will you know, you know you'll find that you're going to get a better storyline as the markets develop here okay so it's gone down to negative 47 and uh, you can see custom rsi also turning now it's negative 129 on this uh, particular bar but you still don't want to get into a put trade also at this point because uh, you know your, your your price action does not support that uh, that trade uh, the custom rsi is still in the bullish zone so until that comes down uh, and aligns itself with the with the tick action uh, you don't want to uh, you know get into a trade but we are somewhat getting into that point where a trade could develop uh, uh, you know a trading opportunity could develop let's go down again to the one minute and see how that looks yeah certainly looking like it's moving down and you can see with the one minute you get a slightly finer perspective of uh, you know both the price action as well as the ticks the ticks have improved to negative 188 here so there's quite a bit of battle going on around the negative 10 point level on the ES. You can see that sometimes it goes a couple of points below the negative 10 and then it goes above also. It's, it's the zone that uh, we're talking about. Let's go back to the five minute. On the five minute, we are still negative, but it's a green dot here. This bar on the five minute came up over here. And so this uh, tells me that there is some kind of a support zone building uh, you know building up at this level also temporarily okay that bar got over and the ticks i think would have improved yeah there you go it improved but it's still along the flat, flat line so it's very close to zero there's no real trading opportunity quite yet it's not developed yet so almost we are almost one hour into this i think if you want to see some trading examples you can go to uh, you know the youtube playlist there's quite a bit of uh, examples there and um, you know you can go and see the and, and so the problem is sometimes you might not see a trading opportunity for a couple of hours and sometimes there might not be an opportunity in the morning session at all it, it could just come up in the afternoon so uh, that's uh, you know that's what it is so you check out the morning and you check out the afternoon rarely does it come in the middle of the day unless there is some kind of news or something like that but uh, it does happen in fact uh, just a couple of days ago there was a nice opportunity in the during the middle of the day and that could have been a 1500 to 2000 dollar trade there so that does happen and so if you're watching the markets then uh, but you want to wait for the right one and not just take a trade based on the fact that you want to trade you know there could be a trade there there could be, you know, and there may not be a trade so I will leave it at this uh, folks if you have any questions uh, please uh, email me at info at option uh, but this is generally how the algo will work it's a tool obviously it's a very uh, insightful tool to uh, take advantage of intraday SPX trading opportunities and uh, so uh, in combination with the you know both the tick uh, as well as uh, the custom RSI uh, you can get some very very good uh, trading opportunities uh, unfortunately this morning not a whole lot because uh, you know we started out negative and so while this looks like a good move it uh, you know it would have been a risky trade in the sense that you can take a small trade and uh, you know could have made a profit but it is really going against the grain whereas you really want to wait for because it's down 11 or 12 points you want to wait for the nice put trade and uh, you know it, it, it probably might develop now you know we're just uh, coming to the one hour mark here this is generally when uh, you know a trading opportunity might exist so what I'm going to do is I'm not going to kill the webinar right now but I'm going to step away and I'll put these screens on and let's see I'll, you know, I'll, I'll come back in a little bit and uh, you know if, if you guys are interested to see how this plays out uh, I'll keep the webinar live and then uh, we'll see how things play out uh, you know as we go along thanks
So that was the end of the webinar. But right after I left off, uh, within the one hour, 15 minute mark, you can see there was a small trade here. Uh, it's about three bars, so about 15 minutes on the five minute chart. Another three bars over here, 15 minutes. So these were very small trades. Maybe you could have made $300, $400 on it and you would have been uh, out of the trade uh, you know, fairly quickly also. But the real opportunity came at the end of the day. And as you can see over here, so from here onwards, we were in a trade for uh, you know almost uh, six or seven bars. So you could have, uh, and this was a nice about four point move down. So this would be about a thousand dollar trade. And uh, this would have been a half an hour trade. And that was uh, towards the close of the day. So that's as far as how yesterday's trading day happened. Each day is different every day. You just have to wait for the right opportunities. Um, as I said, generally one comes up in the beginning of the day and one comes up in the afternoon session. But uh, in between, of course, you can take some smaller trades. But the important thing is, bear in mind, you know, what the market sentiment is. And as you can see uh, over here, uh, most of the time it spent was, uh, you know, below the zero line. And so you were looking for put trades. And of course, uh, the SPX ended about eight points down. So it was a bearish day for sure. You can see the previous day ended, uh, you know, right here. So. Uh, a bearish day, but not a whole lot of opportunity except for the last one could have made about a thousand dollars on a five contract position. So anyway, this is uh, uh, you know this is what it looks like. If you have any questions, you can uh, send me an email at info at optiontiger.com. Thank you.